Hello, and welcome to another installment in the Voltais educational series, The Voltais Way. Each video in this series will include an in-depth demonstration of one or more of the features in Voltais, the most secure and efficient enterprise file access, sharing, and collaboration platform on the market today. Let's begin. In this session, we'll be talking about sharing a file with watermarking. In other sessions, we've discussed this link sharing policy and sharing with DRM, or Digital Rights Management. Here we're going to focus on the watermarking of a file. So watermarking of files adds a level of security to data that has been shared outside of your organization. Data security is sometimes even more important when it leaves the organization's boundaries. Alternatively, recipients of the data could also be an organization's own employees. Voltize provides watermarking on Microsoft Office and PDF files. Now that we're logged in as the administrator, let's take a look at the link share policy where we can define having the downloading with watermark. If we come to a, a policy, we can either create a new one or work with an existing one. In this case, we'll work with an existing one. And all the other parameters that we normally work with will be here, such as geofencing, IP fencing, time-based access, and the link share controls. But now when we get to the share link permissions, we have the ability down here for downloading watermarked files. At this case, we'll let the sharer choose, but we're actually going to configure what items are going to show up in that watermark. The sharer will be able to choose that they want the watermark to show, but the policy behind the scenes will dictate what actually shows in that watermark. So here under the watermark settings, you could add the link visitor's email to the watermark. You could add the date and time of access to the watermark, the IP address of that link visitor, or the share name. So we're going to select these first three. And you can also then decide whether you want to have an image be showing on as the watermark, or in this case, we've chosen to add text. And I've chosen to add AAAA Company Confidential. It is important to note that only Microsoft Office and PDF documents are able to be watermarked because once the watermark is applied and the file is downloaded, it's downloaded as a PDF file. Also, you cannot watermark a file that has digital rights management associated with it. We now go to save the policy and now let's look at it from the user's point of view. So now as an end user wanting to share a watermarked file with an external individual, I can select a folder, pick a particular file, select share as link, validate with my pin code to access the Voltai server, and then add a share name, address, and a message if I want to be able to share this with someone. Or I can also come out and go directly into my Voltai's client, do a right mouse click, and then select my vault, authenticate with my pin code, and now I can select from files that I've either recently accessed and be able to share those with share as link or I can come out to my data where information that I've stored on the server is also available to me. I'm going to do that and I'm going to select this file right here, five file security mistakes. There are many things that I can do here. I can select more information about this file. I can rename this file. I can hide the file if I want, but I'm going to share it as a link. So I'll click on share as link. I now can enter an email address, so I'm going to share it with John Smith. I'm going to select to show advanced options. I'm going to click add, and now that I have John Smith here, I can come down and configure the permissions. So if you remember the permissions that we had from the link share policy, the one I want to select at this point is to download watermark files. Once again, once I select this, it's governed by policy what information is going to show on the watermark. I, as a user, can't change any of that. We're going to do that. As we've talked about before, we could add an optional message here. We could share just the current copy or any possible updates. We could add a password if we wanted, or possibly shorten the expiration of this link to something less than what was in that policy. We also can allow access only to the following IP addresses, thereby regulating where someone can access this from. We'll go ahead and click on Share. Now we'll come up to our Shares area, which you can see that we're at. We're going to take a look at our five file security mistakes. So you saw that email has been sent and the file has been shared. Now that it's been shared, it says who it was shared to, so John Smith, when it was shared, but we can also get information. Once again, like we talked about before, you can get additional information about the file and who it was shared with and when, and how long the expiration potentially is. 
you can select to download the file. You can share it with others if you want in addition to who you've already shared it with. You can edit that share. So one of the things we talked about in, our, in another installment was the ability to come back and configure permissions differently if you want, to change those attributes about what someone may or may not be able to do with the data you've shared with them. You can also come out and unshare this file. So with just the click of a button, that link that we've sent out externally is, will show as expired, and that external individual will no longer be able to access the link so you can protect your data integrity. If the person you've shared the data with says, I've lost that original email, can you resend the link? It's as simple as clicking here for resend link. One of the things we talked about earlier on was the history of a file. You could come here and click and see who this file has been shared with. And you can see right now we just shared, John Doe just shared it today. But we could actually see the exact history. So when that external user comes out to access the file, we can see when they did that, from what IP address, everything that we saw that was going to be on that watermark that we included will actually show up here in the history of a file. And last but not least, if you want, you can set alerts. So depending upon when someone accesses the link, or they open it with DRM or download, open it, upload it, or do any kind of have any kind of violations with the file, you would potentially be able to get an alert notice that that has happened from your external user accessing the data. So now let's take a look at what that external user is going to see. So we're going to log into the email of our recipient, john.smith.voltize. We're going to see that John has a new email. It says, John Doe has shared a file with you in the subject line. We're going to open it up and we see that John Doe has in fact shared a file. The name of the file is Five File Security Mistakes. It was sent on this date. There's the link. There's the file. If we had had a message, you saw in there that John Doe could have typed in a message that would appear in this area right in here. But for now, what we're going to do is we're going to click on the link. That'll take us to the Voltai server. Now we can see that there's the file. We can see that it says download with watermark file. And one thing I want to point out to you, remember before when we talked about what was going to appear on that watermark? Well, here's John Smith's email address, and here's also his IP address. And we should see those across the file when we do the download watermark file. So we clicked on download. We're waiting for the server. The server brings up the file. We're going to open it up. And there we see AAAA Company Confidential, John Smith Voltize. And we see his IP address, there it is, and we also see the date splashed across that, that document of ours. So now, what you've seen is how to create the policy for downloading with watermarked files. You saw how the internal user would interact and be able to share data with the watermarked file. And you've seen what it looks like for an external user to be able to receive the watermarked file and be able to view it. We hope that you have found this session in the Voltize Education Series to be informative and educational. Please visit our website at voltize.com for more videos in the series educating you on the Voltize platform. If you have any questions or comments about Voltize, please send an email to sales at voltize.com. Thank you.